up everybody welcome back to another video in today's video we have some detroit lions news now there's a little bit of an echo in this room so i'm going to try to keep it down because there's a little bit of an echo and if i get loud it, it gets kind of bad so we have some lions news that i want to discuss in today's video a couple of moves were made by the detroit lions as we wait for some possible other news with a guy like todd Gurley to see if the lions will sign todd Gurley. we talked about yesterday how the lions are interested in signing todd Gurley, but there is no date on when that would be done but today the lions made some other moves in the backfield so let's get it started up, we're gonna bite a kneecap off and we're gonna stand up and then it's gonna take two more shots to knock us down and on the way up we're gonna take your other kneecap and we're gonna get up and then it's gonna take three shots to get us down and when we do we're gonna take another hunk out of you before before long we're the, gonna be the last one standing welcome everybody to our video glad you guys are here and yes we got some detroit lions news and this stuff has really just started to pick up because now we're into the off season we're into the otas like this stuff is picking up pretty quickly is this three straight days with the player being released i think it is that's pretty crazy so yeah it's definitely picking up and the lions continue to make some moves and of course there's all these rumors out here the lions are going to do this they're going to sign this guy they're going to cut this guy we'll just have to wait and see what happens we're not sure what's going to happen but today the lions didn't make a move and that was signing running back michael warren the second out of Cincinnati. Also, he spent time with the Eagles. He spent time with Washington. He spent time with the Panthers. This was a UDFA back in 2020. Now we'll get into Michael Warren in a second, but why sign Michael Warren? Well, the Detroit Lions released running back Rakeem Boyd on an injury settlement. Yes, Rakeem Boyd, the last chance you running back, the UDFA for this season out of Arkansas has been released. Now, I had some high hopes for Rakeem Boyd and his potential to try and make the team. Of course, the signing of Todd Gurley would have made it even more difficult for him because I think then you would have had Gurley, Jamal, and Swift kind of as locks. And then he would have been competing for that fourth running back spot with Jermar Jefferson, who was drafted. It was a tough battle at that running back position. Unfortunately for Rakeem, we haven't seen him participate in practice for the Detroit Lions. He was off to the side working with trainers the last OTAs in the first week of OTAs, but that's all that we've heard for a guy like Rakeem Boyd. He has not participated with the teams through rookie minicamp, through the first two weeks of OTAs. He's dealt with injuries, so unfortunately, he hasn't been able to get on the field, and that's not good, right? You can't get on the field. You can't show the coaches what you're about, and they don't know how to evaluate you, especially a UDFA who, you know, you signed. You didn't draft him, right? You didn't use a draft pick. You didn't go sign this guy as a free agent. He's a UDFA, so it's a really tough climb for a guy like Rakeem Boyd. It's already had some up and downs. Last year with Arkansas was kind of a mess how it ended after a really good year before that. I mean, he was coming into 2020 with some very legitimate expectations as one of the top running backs in the nation. And that didn't happen. Let's get another opportunity here with Detroit, but now he has been released. Now, what is an injury settlement? All right, that is a question you may have. Well, an injury settlement is basically you can't release a player because he's injured. So the Detroit Lions and Rakeem Boyd came to an agreement for an injury settlement. So instead of placing him on IR, for the season, they're just like, okay, we're going to release you on an injury settlement. So now he can be signed elsewhere and he could still be signed back by the Detroit Lions if they wanted to do it down the road. But now instead of just placing him on IR, they have now released Rakeem Boyd. So he is no longer a Detroit Lion. So not the same thing that went on with Hunter Bryant. So he is available right now for a team to sign. Again, he could be brought back by the Lions. Releasing Rakeem Boyd does the same thing. It still gets in that roster spot as it would as placing him on IR, but it also allows Rakeem Boyd to get an opportunity to go sign elsewhere. Instead of just being, hey, I'm placed on IR. I'm out for, you know, the first six weeks of the season. I don't know exactly what the rule is. That's it. You know, I can't play the first two weeks no matter what. So it's like, okay, I got an opportunity to go sell on a sign elsewhere or the Lions could sign him back at some point. But in place of Rakeem Boyd, the Lions have signed running back Michael Warren II. Now, Michael Warren II was UDFA a year ago. And like I said, he's been with multiple teams, but the one place where he has connections is with Philadelphia because Deuce Staley was the running back coach with Philadelphia. So there was a clear tie there. But coming out of Cincinnati, this is a 5'11", 222 pound running back. The dude's definitely got size. His nickname was The Truck. Okay, I think that tells you all you need to know. And that was his running style. To me, this is gonna be very good competition for a guy like Dedrick Mills out of Nebraska, who's another type of power back, can lead block. Maybe not the exact same play style, but I think it's going to be some good competition. He right now, without the signing of a guy like Todd Gurley, is one of our bigger backs in the backfield. He's a short yardage back, so he gives us some of that if, of course, he made the team. Now, this running back had great production back in college, so some people were surprised that he went undrafted. Of course, you know, being at Cincinnati, maybe not the best competition, but he did play well against good teams. He had multiple 100-yard rushing games, and his statistics were through the roof. Starting at his sophomore season, where the guy had 19 rushing touchdowns, over 1,300 yards 
yards and 5.4 yards per carry. He was the guy, right? And their coach called him the heart and soul of the offense. Then he comes back for his junior season, and in his junior year, he puts up good production. Not as good, but still really good. 4.8 yards per carry, over 12 yards rushing, and 14 rushing touchdowns in 14 games. All right, so the numbers were definitely there. He was putting up the numbers in college. He actually had his debut with the Washington football team when Antonio Gibson was dealing with turf toe. That was the first time we saw him, but we didn't actually see him take snaps. So he's still yet to take snaps in the NFL, have statistical production in the NFL. But I think his connection with Deuce Daly is very, very key here. Now at his size, he still did run an unofficial 4 4 9 40 time, which is pretty darn good. And I went and I watched some film on Michael, Michael Warren just because I want to take a look at what the Lions may have got here. Oh, little bit you know and of course at some point we will do a full breakdown on him like we've done with some of the other guys we did one on Rakeem Boyd so we'll definitely do one on Michael Warren the second but I did want to watch a little bit of film and I noticed yes he's a very strong runner he is the short yardage goal line situation that's why he has the touchdown numbers he has he's that guy and right now the lines I would say their guy is Jamal Williams for those situations, unless Dedrick Mills made the team. But it's probably Jamal Williams, right? In those short yardage, just hand it off between the tackles. But he would bring more of that to the table with that background, as that's kind of what he's known for. Fantastic ball security, very reliable as a runner. Didn't fumble the ball very often. He also has pretty nice hands as well. You can see him on the backfield. He's asked to run a pretty complex route. So, I mean, he had a pretty nice route tree from the backfield. And of course, he played in a spread offense. That's important, right? The scheme fit there. He played in a spread offense back with Cincinnati. But he had some solid hands. Hands. When you watched him play, it wasn't like he had crazy receiving production, but he did have good hands when the ball was thrown his way. Now, the biggest knocks that he's been getting is his shiftiness, his agility is not there. And while I will agree, he's not going to scare you in space, he's not going to break your ankles, he is light on his feet. And being light on his feet is very important in his own running scheme for him to pick and choose his way through the offensive line, you know, kind of decide where he's going to go. His vision seemed pretty darn solid to me, and he was very quick to make that decision. He was a one-cut runner. He was very quick. He was extremely decisive. He wasn't trying to bounce things to the outside. The other running backs, like a Jamal Williams, right, decisive, wants to get a field, going to run between the tackles, understands, hey, I'm not going to get to the outside that often. I don't have that kind of speed. I don't have the edge speed. I'm not scary in space, but I run hard. I break a a lot of tackles I'm tough to bring down he does run a little tall I think a little bit but he is decisive as a runner and he can kind of work his way through some of the offensive line Nick Horst when we go into the film we'll look at it a little bit deeper Let's say he does lack a little bit of burst it's not like he gets the handoff and it's 0 200 but at the same time like I said it's solid vision pretty light on his toes to bounce back and forth he does have pretty good contact balance usually when he's hitting the legs you're going down he doesn't just go down like if you just run into him he can stay on his feet balance bounce off of guys kind of like a you know what, what are those games you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like you shoot it, it's like, ooh, we need to flip the paddles. You know what I'm talking about. But he does have a little bit of top end speed. I ain't gonna act like he's slow, but he's kind of a build up runner, it seems like. It's not like, hey, boom, gone. It's not like, who would I compare it to? Darren Sproles? He's got some top end to him at his size, which means once he gets rolling downhill, uh oh, safeties better watch out because instead of trying to juke you, he's just gonna run you over. Now, one knock he really has is pass protection, and this is a big knock. He has solid hands, but his pass curl is a little questionable. It's actually very questionable. It's one of the places where he gets his biggest knocks, which makes it tough for him on third downs. Obvious passing downs to be on the field. Not saying that the Lions need him on the field because they have other guys that could do this, but in pass protection, to me, what seemed like the issue was that he couldn't stay connected. He couldn't stay in front of rushers that well. He just wasn't able to stay in front of those guys. People gave him knocks for missing blitzes, you know, not being able to pick up, not seeing what's going on. I could see a little bit of that. To me, it's just the inability to stay connected. Even when he got picked up a, a linebacker or a rusher, he wasn't able to stay connected with them. His blocking technique just did not look good. And what do Staley say? You gotta be able to block for me if you wanna play for me. So it's something that he's gonna have to prove throughout this off season that he can do at a pretty high level because the Lions have a lot of running backs that block. Gurley can block if he was signed. But to me, he had the whiffs. He just wasn't able to stay in front of guys. His blocking technique was just not good. He's got a lot of power though. So if he does hit you, he can definitely move you off your spot, kind of stun some pass rushers. What would be his role? He would be in the short yard of situations, could leak out the backfield play action because he can catch the ball, but you don't want him on obvious passing downs because of some of his blocking concerns, things like that. And you have Swift and Jamal who are just gonna be more dangerous in those situations. You're probably not lining him out wide, but he can catch the ball, which makes play action nice, especially goal line, right? Play action, have him leak out, you can dump it off to him. So that's probably gonna be his role. He's taken a lot of carries back in college, so it'd be nice to have it with a smaller role. And again, this is assuming that he made the team, but that's probably what his role would look like. So Michael Warren II is now a Lion. Rakeem Boyd has been released. And that is your latest Detroit Lions news. Like I said, we will do a film video. I probably won't do it here because I'm not home. But once we get back home, we'll do a film video on Michael Warren, assuming he's still on the team. 
and we'll see what happens with Rakeem Boyd. Wishing you the best of luck, but as of now, he has been released. And also, Michael Warren was Mr. Football back in 2016 coming out of high school. He's from Toledo, Ohio, which is pretty cool. And he was a two-time second all American second team all-American. So he definitely got, you know, some some acknowledgement for what he was doing production. And you may be thinking, does this news mean the Lions won't go sign Todd Gurley? I don't think so. Because they released Rakeem Boyd, I think it's just another have have another guy there that can compete and that you can actually see on the field. That's the issue with Boyd. Like I said, he's just very unproven. There's a lot of things that you want to see from him, even though it's early. So the Lions get a body out there that can participate, it seems. To me, it's just kind of replacing it. The Lions still have two roster spots open. I heard some Golden Tate rumors, but I don't think that's going to happen. I wouldn't be mad about it if it was a cheap deal. I would love a Golden Tate reunion. Yes, please. But Lions still have two roster spots open after the cuts they've been making recently. So they could still guys sign the grilly, sign someone else. You know, you just want to have competition. Why not fill your roster? If you can, if there's guys out there that you want to bring in to just see, why wouldn't you do it? Even if it's for later down the road, hey, we like this guy when he was in camp. We need the camp. We need the body now. Injuries have come up. He's still available. Let's go sign him. Having that connection is great. So why would you not fill it out if, if you can, right? So if you're waiting on Gurley or trying to get a deal done, but it's not happening right now, replace it. You're going to cut Ricky Boyd. Okay, let's bring in someone with a connection, someone that can compete, someone that we can see on the field. It just makes sense. I don't think this takes anything away from Todd Gurley because having Rakeem Boyd here took nothing away from the Lions saying, yes, we're interested in Gurley. But you never know as well. Guy like this hasn't had an opportunity to play a snap on the field. Maybe he surprises some people. Maybe he shows out. We've seen these guys, UDFAs, turn into stuff great sometimes. We saw James Robinson, what he did for Jacksonville. Not to say it's the same situation, but I'm just saying you never know. So why not at least bring in a competition to just see? You know, just see what it's about, see what he can do. So I don't think this takes away from the Lions can't sign Todd Gurley now, they won't do it, because I think you're just replacing running back to get to see someone and bring more competition. You want players to feel competition. You don't want them to feel comfortable like, oh, McKean Boy's not playing, we're chilling. No, let's keep bringing in competition. Like, no one's safe. We're, we're cycling through this. You gotta ball out, you gotta play well, you gotta play hard, you gotta show up to things. I think that is what the Lions are doing here. So I, I love it. I don't think it takes away from the possibility though of signing Gurley. I still think that's gonna happen at some point just from what we've been hearing. Thank you, Brock, for watching, and I'm out.